Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So tonight, we have a clear forecast. Um, but it's only from like 8 till 11 is the forecast of clear skies. So I'm going to try to get the 8 inch RC out uh, for first light. If I can't get it first light, um, at least I'm going to try and uh, get my focus uh, dialed in and get my guide scope um, lined up with my uh, primary telescope and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully if I still have time um, maybe slew to a target or two and try to uh, to get first light. So with all that being said um, let's go ahead and um, get the uh, mount set up and then let's work on uh, getting things balanced and cross our fingers for for a clear uh, window of uh, sky. I would like to um, thank everybody who has subscribed to my channel and thank everybody who has uh, watched my videos. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm I'm putting these videos out just because this is something that I like to do, and I like to kind of share what. Um, you know share my interests there's a lot of people out there that have the same interest and it's kind of um, nice to talk to others that have that same interest so um, if you're subscribed thank you very much uh, so if you feel inclined to uh, go ahead and subscribe um, I really appreciate it and with that let's go ahead and uh, start getting things set up
Okay, so let's do a quick uh, scope rundown of what I'm going to be imaging with tonight. Um, first time, so we're going to try to work out all the bugs and get everything set up. So this is the Orion 8-inch Ritchie Kratian uh, Astrograph. It has a focal length of 1600 millimeters. The aperture is 200 millimeters. It is f8. Um, for guiding, I'm going to be guiding with the uh, 80 millimeter Orion short tube, which has an 80 millimeter aperture and a 400 millimeter uh, focal length. I'll be using the Orion uh, Starship Auto Guider. Um, I've had this forever. Um, it hasn't let me down yet. And for and for the primary camera, we are going to be using the Orion uh, G26 one-shot color. Uh, it has the APS-C um, sensor in it, and this will all be riding on top of my Atlas EQG um, mount that is rated to 40 pounds. This whole setup right here, I've uh, weighed it, and it comes in at about 25.2, whoops, should have shut that door. Uh, I've weighed this uh, setup, and it comes in at 25.2 pounds. So we should be plenty um, under the weight capacity of the Atlas EQG. Okay, so I think we have everything set up, at least from a mount and telescope perspective. Um, so now I just need to wait for uh, wait for it to get dark and do a polar alignment. Um, so it looks like forecast is is turning out as they say. Right now, my skies are crystal clear, so I may have all night. Um, to test out uh, the Richie Kratian 8-inch uh, and get some uh, first light uh, images or at least get through my focusing um, get through the focusing and make sure that I uh, have the focusing down and make sure that my uh, guide scope is lined up with my um, primary uh, OTA so yeah, let's go ahead and shut uh, the lid and so we can keep everything um, from getting dusty. And uh, once uh, I can see Polaris, we'll come out and do our polar alignment. Okay guys, um, so I finally got everything set up. Um, originally, the original plan was to run the 8-inch RC on my Atlas mount, but when I went to do polar alignment, because the Atlas mount sits lower to the ground, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, see Polaris to do my alignment. The um, Sirius mount, or the EQ5 mount, sits higher up, so um, from my observatory I'm able to clear my roof and um, polar line. So I had to scratch that whole um, idea, so I actually pulled my Sirius mount out and put that in the observatory. Put that in the observatory, got that polar line, and that's what I'm running the RC8 on right now. Um, got it balanced and everything, and if we go ahead and look um, at my 
guiding right now. Uh, this is the best that I've had, I and mean, I'm really surprised with the guiding. Uh, total, total, uh, the total RMS is, uh, has been averaging about 0.6. And right now it's 0.53. So I'm just amazed at my guiding right now. I don't know if it's because it's a heavier scope. Um, with the 8-inch Newtonian that was a 1,000 millimeter before, which was a standard Newtonian, um, that thing was probably 3.5 foot long. Um, this, because it's an RC, is fairly compact it's about two foot long I don't know the exact uh, length of it dimension wise but I think that helps uh, with the balance and with the uh, the guiding so uh, earlier I took a video of uh, I had I had a lot of problems um, finding focus getting everything aligned getting the guide scope lined up with the the main OTA um, finally got that set up, and um, once I did that, uh, the moon was out, so I took a short video of the moon, uh, took a short video of Jupiter. Uh, I'll stack those and see if those come out, um, if they're if they're worth anything. Uh, what I'm on right now is uh, M16. Uh, the Eagle Nebula, and if we look at, um, so guiding right now is at 0.7, still a lot better than, than I've had even with my uh, shorter focal length scopes. So if we look at um, a single sub, I'm shooting 240 second subs. I Exposure finished. 240 second subs. Um, no filter exposure started i really should have put uh my uh l enhanced filter in but since this is just a test um i didn't i was just mainly worried about finding focus and getting the getting everything lined up um i'm gonna be running into some light pollution here as it uh starts to set towards the west um that's in the direction of some big um, freight trucking facilities that leave their led lights on uh, all night long and um also that's the direction of uh, yuma arizona the city that, that i live in live by um so far i've gotten six subs i'll let it run tonight a little longer and then i will um i'll do my darks and flats and then uh we'll see what we got in the morning but if we look at it just a single sub Here's the eagle, it's upside down. Doesn't look too bad. Um, collimation. I've got a little bit of elongated stars um, over here in the, in the top uh, right. A little elongation, not so much in the bottom right. Fraction spikes. The lower left corner looks really good. And the lower, uh, the upper left corner doesn't look too bad either. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, it's, it's looking pretty good. So I probably do need to collimate it slightly. But we'll look to see how how everything looks once I process. 
So yeah, let's go back to gliding. So I'm at point six. That's still tons better than than what I was getting before with uh, like my 480 millimeter focal length scope or my red cat. Um, and it, maybe it's just my balance was off. And I've got the balance on this one set pretty good. One of the things with the with the RC is because the camera is to the back, it's not like a traditional Newtonian. Uh, balance is, is a lot easier to achieve and maintain when when it uh, slews and, and as it uh, as it goes throughout the sky. It, it, I think it maintains its uh, its balance a lot better than a standard Newtonian. But anyways, yeah, this looks pretty good. Cross our fingers and and see what we get. The skies are completely clear. I have no clouds. I don't think I'll have any clouds till morning. Everything looks looks really, really, really good. So exposure finished. Exposure started. Yeah, these are turning out pretty good. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's continue until uh, until we capture. See how many. Let's see how many lights we can capture, and we'll kind of go from there.